What led me to this series is ministry in the own. God is as to his nature love. And then I find out that every time love is mentioned in the Bible, it's speaking about the nature of God. The Holy Ghost shed the love of God in our hearts. I've been thinking about God's love, but I never thought about the Holy Ghost put God's nature of love in us. I've just been thinking about God's love in me. But when now when you bring it into his nature, the very fact that who God is is placed in you, you can understand some things. You have to live out of what God placed in you. You can't live out of yourself anymore. Yourself has become inoperative because it used to belong to the enemy. Now we are of God. We have the same nature he has, and he wants us to partake of him in that sense. First of all, the God kind of love is a product of the spirit. You got emotional love that can turn off and on. But when you love with the God love, that's constant. That don't change. You can do me bad. You can mistreat me, but I still love you. Won't even take it into account. Won't even say nothing about it. Why? That's God's love. But the emotional love, you do me, I'm going to do you. First Peter 3, look at verse 4. And believe it or not, he was actually talking to women. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word. That's 3 and 1. Be won by the conversations of the wife. How the wife lived their life before the Lord Jesus. See, this was actually written to women. While they behold your chaste conversation, the way you live your life, coupled with fear. That's the fear of the Lord in you. You have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair, or of wearing of gold, or of putting on apparel. But, see, because the Lord deals with the inside. He deals with the heart of a person. And that's what he wants us to do. He does not judge according to appearance. He judges righteously in the heart of man. The heart of man is hidden from eyes. You can't see a person's heart. The head is actually the expression of what's in the heart coming through the five physical senses. So we attribute thinking to the head when it's of the heart. We attribute all kind of things to our body, which the heart is actually the seat of the physical life. Okay, verse 4. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. That's where the adornment comes in. In that which is not corruptible. The heart is not corruptible. Once Jesus Christ enter in, there is no corruption. The enemy wants you to think it is, but there is none. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Now, what did Jesus say? Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For what? I am meek and lowly in what? Heart. So then he's looking for a meek and quiet spirit or disposition, which is in the sight of God, a great price. In other words, very costly. Your spirit man is precious and blood of Jesus was shed for it. So now we're talking about the hidden man of the what? Of the heart. These are illustrations on the board. Sister Deb, how much room do your thinking take up? How much room does your thinking take up? Your thinking don't take up no room. You can think all day long. How you going to fill up something with your thinking? You can't. The reason why your thinking don't take up room is because it's spiritual. How much room your words take up? None, because it's spiritual. Well, how much room do your spirit take up? None. So every time I draw a little thing like this, it looks like your spirit is in that containment. Your spirit don't take up no room. It's vast. The love of God was shed abroad. He didn't say the love of God was shed in the little box over there in the corner. In the spirit, there is no time. There's no time in the spirit realm. It's always a glorious present now. So these are just illustrations. But what kind of room God's spirit take up? None. The reason why I'm going to draw a heart is because we're familiar with a Valentine heart. Our heart ain't shaped like that. Okay. That's the heart. It says the hidden man of the heart. So in here, you have a man. Now, what is this man called? This is your spirit man. He's hid and can't but one person see him. Say, I can't see him. That's the reason why you don't have no right to judge people. You do not have the right. You didn't die on Calvary's cross and shed your blood for somebody to judge them. You're to judge their what? Fruit. Fruit. Fruit is what you can see. That's why I said 
your head is an expression of what's in your heart. Okay, now, what is this spirit of man called? It is a person, first of all, so therefore your personality is down here. This is basically the me, who I am, the me. Okay, you understand this. Come with me to Matthew 15 chapter. Your head is an expression of your heart. What is your tongue connected to? Your tongue is connected. That's right, baby. Oh, I didn't mean to say that, Uh uh-huh. I was just kidding, Uh uh-huh. After you said something, saw that kind of look on their face, then you say, oh, (laughs) it was just a joke. I was just playing. I was just teasing you. When somebody say something to you, if it ain't the word of God, you ain't talking to me. You can tell me anything. You can call me anything. You can't be talking to me because I know who I am. So why should I get upset? See, you got to know who you are because you are in a wicked and evil, perverse world. And the enemy only mess around with God's people. He don't mess around with nobody else. So if you ain't none of God, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You're on, you're on the wrong side. So look, in verse 18, but those things which proceeded out of the mouth come forth from the heart. You reading that? You see what it says? Look in verse 15 and 18. See what it says? For those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. The heart is right here. Your innermost being. See, you are a spirit being. You're in the God class. Even though we have a human nature, we're in the God class. For out of the heart, go tell you what come out of that now. Proceed evil thoughts. Man, I thought I was thinking that. Yeah, uh-huh. Murders. See, some of these are inclination. Inclinations mean that if you was put in the position to do it, you could do it. You're inclined to do it. And see, when Jesus Christ shed his blood, he took that inclination away from you. If you don't get into the word of God and renew your mind, he made the inclination inoperative. In other words, it can't rule over you. He broke the power of the sin nature. The sin nature is still there in the old man, but it is what? Inoperative. He pulled a plug out. So it's inoperative. Nothing spiritually is destroyed. It becomes inoperative. When you get your glorified body, he says, meets for the belly and, and both will be destroyed. They will be inoperative. You won't need to eat food. Now you can eat if you want to, but there's no need. For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashing hands defiled not a man. Before you were born again, this right here was dark. This was full of sin. This is sin nature. Before you were born again. That's why it's important to receive Jesus as your Savior. Apart from God, you can't save yourself. You know this already. You'll be crippled the rest of your life if you do not partake of the divine nature of God and his exceeding great and precious promises. You'll be crippled the rest of your life. So then, with this being the sin nature... You got all that stuff in you. As a matter of fact, every action or every act that you do has character. Now, you know that. Every act, every word. Why? It comes out of your character. Therefore, your action is given character. And guess what's in that character? The motive and the intent. Every act, every word. You can have a smile on your face and say, I love you. But God knows what you feel on the inside. (laughs) You can fool your own self as much as you want to, but he knows. You can cover it up with chocolate ice cream and candy and frosting over the cake, but God knows what's inside the cake. You might as well be real. I mean, that's less you got to be delivered from. And people, oh, I don't want to hurt their feelings. I got to tiptoe around. Well, you better not come around me because, but anyway, it's all good because God is what? Good. And he's always looking out for our ultimate good. And it's a sin if you don't continue in his goodness. You got to continue in the goodness of God. You can't cut that off. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? Good. (laughs) All right. So then sin is a principle which has his seat in the heart of man. And because of that, this is what happened. Your actions. All right, now, so we saw that. And the thing about it, your action involves all of you, your spirit, your soul, your body, your life affairs, your individuality, your personality, your possession. What's in you can mess up everything, and you don't even know it's messed up. 
That's why the trials and tests come to show you where you need to be in Christ. Every time you fail the test, the test will come back to show you what you got where in here. Because this is what God deals with. And you ought to be glad. And you just be glad when something go wrong. Uh oh, oh, I got to take care of that. Thank you, Jesus. Because you want to go in the rapture. You don't want to be left down here. That's the reason why you want all that ugly, bad stuff to show up. Just show up so I can stare you in the face and deal with you. Because I'm going up. <laughs> I ain't saying down here. <laughs> all right. That's the goal. Looking unto Jesus. You can't be looking unto Jesus and looking around at everything else. You can't do that. They don't fit. <laughs> Come to Ezekiel, 36th chapter. So you feast off of the word of God all week long, and then when you get up in the pulpit, you believe the Lord will put himself on display through the word. Then that way I'm not bound to my notes because I have it in me. And if I like to chase rabbits, I like to chase rabbits. We're going to start at Ezekiel 36. Look at verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Sound like he's talking about being born again by the water and the spirit. Even this verse signifies the fact that the blood of Jesus sprinkled upon the conscience go purified and it's going to take away the sense of guilt. You can do something and ask the Lord to forgive you and you still got this guilt still nagging you. Well, the blood of Jesus took care of the guilt. All you got to do is have faith in the blood and what it said it's going to do. Not only that, you're going to have the grace of the spirit sprinkled on your whole being. Everything that sin touch from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, you're going to have grace sprinkled on your whole being to cleanse you from pollution of sin. See, God don't leave nothing undone, but it works on the inside and flows to the outside. He not just going to clean this. You got people that got good outward virtues. Oh, she just so friendly and she just like everybody and, and to do everything to help you and all that kind of stuff. And they could be rotting this dead man's bone on the inside. So see, outward virtue is supposed to be lining up with what's inside of you. Then he goes on and said, a new heart also will I give you. He said, he gonna give you a new heart and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. Now, what's a stony heart? A stony heart is, first of all, what? Made out of stone. It's hard. There's no softness there. There's no tenderness. So a heart of flesh would be soft, tender. There is no sensitivity here. It's only sensitive to self, me, myself, and I. Not no sensitivity to the way it comes to another person. So the Lord said, I'm going to give you a new heart. That means a new disposition. Take that old cold heart out of you. What caused the heart to be cold and like that? Now, he said, I will give you a new heart and I will what? put in you a new spirit. When you become born again, that spirit man is recreated in the image and likeness of God. He put a new spirit. Jesus, I receive you as my savior. Your inside, baby. Your inside. This is what happened. Your inside is clean. The blood come in there and clean everything out. You still got your spirit man in here. You still got your human nature because that's what makes us human. But your spirit man has been recreated, recreated spirit in his image and his likeness. In other words, God's spirit came in here. You are born of love. As to God's nature, he is love and you are born. See, when the Holy Ghost shed abroad the love of God in our hearts, he's talking about God's nature and God's nature is love. The inside of you is made out of love. If you got God, he that love it not, know it not God. If you love, you know God. If you don't love, you don't know God. That don't mean you're not saved. That means you ain't fellowshipping with him and partaking of his exceeding great and precious promises. Okay? Not only did that happen, but guess what? You got his divine nature put in you. I'm God. I'm wall to wall God, baby. I love to live and I live to love. Because I'm the beloved. I am beloved of God. I am a divinely loved one. So that you may what? Love one another. Okay, now this is the blood of Jesus coming in here and taking care of all this. Now, your tongue is still connected to your spirit. And all you can do is just starving and waiting for somebody to talk about the word. If they don't talk about the word, I don't talk about the word. Because I find that some people only talk about the word if you start talking about it. You'll know it'll come up. 
If it don't come up, I don't bring it up. Because then they get holy because they think you holy. They put on a whole new show. Then they give it somebody else, they talk another way. No, you're supposed to talk the same way all the time. That's the word of God. Why? You don't belong to you no more. You don't have no rights. When you receive Jesus, the first thing you said was, Lord, I give up my rights to myself. I can't keep me. I can't save me. I can't do nothing for me. And he said, that's who I've been looking for because I want to do everything for you. I want to do everything for you. But no, I can do this. I can do that. And he goes, okay, go ahead on. And then you're going to have what? Failure. You're going to have discontentment. So a hard-hearted is insensitive to the spirit of God. He said, I'm going to take that out of you and I'm going to put a heart of flesh. That means it's going to be pliable to the Holy Ghost. It's going to be pliable to God. Pliable means it can easily bend and don't break. That's the Jesus I know. A soft, tender heart that has spiritual senses. What you do with spiritual senses? You exercise them. The way you exercise your spiritual sense is to be in compliance and in obedience to God's word. Every time you obey God's word, he puts righteousness to your account. Every time you take the word of God, you obey it. Righteousness is placed on your account. Every time you believe God, and he will bring it to pass, your believing puts righteousness on your account. Why? Faith. And what is God? A faith God. So then, now, not only is his love down here, his faith is down here. And most of all, light. Oh, that's God. You God inside. I'm here to tell you. Ain't nothing but the devil in you. You God. You belong to God. You're offspring of God. As Jesus told them Jews, didn't I read in the Bible that you are God? Now, everything about you wrapped around this, you'll never have no more problems. Oh, yeah, the problems come. But guess what? You above them. And you can see them for what they are. And don't even phase you. I left the realm of healing by faith in his name. His name is what? His nature. His name represents everything that he is. By faith in his name, I receive a perfect soundness in this flesh bone body. Perfect soundness. I've been here for so long, it's time to move on. <laughs> <laughs> every time so heal, every time so heal, heal. Get a revelation of a perfect soundness. Perfect. Why? It's in Christ. That's where your perfections are. So now you don't receive Jesus as your savior. Your life is now hid with Christ. This is Christ, baby. Who is where? In God. All of this is hidden from the naked eye. And can nobody teach you about the inside of you but Jesus. This is just an illustration. Everybody in here has this, but everybody here is different. You can use this as a guide, but everybody is different. And I'm sure I'm not going to put you with me. Well, if you was like me, like Moses said, I wish all of y'all was like me. <laughs> Where? In here. But somebody got to go out there in the marketplace. I don't spend my time out there with them already. That's the reason why wherever you are, you are happy and content, full of joy. Why? Because of this. This rules and reigns over everything, baby. All right. Come with me to Psalms 51. Can't nobody teach you about your innermost nature but the Lord. But he can give us instruction where it can profit us. You know about everything else and you don't know about how your spiritual makeup is. The one that created. You know every facet of this and what's going on over there and, and all that. And don't know nothing about what God did on the inside of you. I know what's going on over here and that and everywhere else, but I do know what God did. Some people become a lover of pleasure more than what? God. Some people become a lover of this and a lover of that more than God. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. So where all your time go? To the Lord. When it gets down to the nitty gritty, he allowed you to get a certain age and come on up and let your children and everything grow up. So what? He can have what? More of you for his doing. Now you ain't got no excuse. You ain't got none. I ain't got no excuse. You either. Psalm 51 is oof, just too good. Verse 3. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. This is an unsaved man. For you receive Jesus, your conscience go beat the hell out of you when you sin and ain't doing right. Most people just say, oh, well. And that's it. Then their conscience become what? Hard and seared. And it don't talk to them no more. Not knowing that your conscience is actually the voice of your spirit. Spirit man crying. I want to be saved. Verse 6. 
sees all of it good. Because every time you commit a sin, you actually sin against God by your words, by your actions, your thinking. He know what you're thinking. Because why? As a man thinking where? In his heart. So is he. So he know what you're thinking. I don't want to know what you're thinking. Because I start preaching on it. Verse 6. Behold, this is when David had gone into Bathsheba, messing around with Uriah's wife. So look what he said in verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. God demands truth in inward parts. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Then Jesus Christ is made unto us wisdom. But the Holy Ghost reveals this to them. The Lord wants us to know about wisdom, know about the things of God, so we can take them and apply them in our everyday life. He doesn't want you to be churchy at church, and then when you leave out of church, you are alley cat. You're supposed to be God inside the church and God outside the church, in your house, everywhere, in all of your relationships. Not no just a, a show and for people to think you are a certain way. I live this way. Look at verse 10. David said, create in me a clean heart. So then if he said, create in me a clean heart, he was saying, create something that was not there. When something is created, that means it wasn't there. So he said, create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. Yeah, well, create something that's not there. Renew something that's already there. Apparently, if you got to renew it, something must be wrong with it. That's the reason why you got to renew your mind with the word. Something is wrong with your mind. Wrong thinking causes you to believe wrong. And now you notice when I point it up here, this head is an expression of your heart. You think wrong up here, that means it's wrong down here. You got to get this right. And you can't get it right. But God can. But with God, what? All things are possible. He said, what? All. Don't care what it is. All things are possible. All. All. I'm not just going to talk this stuff. I live it. And then you got the same choice to live it. Because if you do not have Christian experiences with the power of God, you're going to be held accountable. Amen? You couldn't die on Calvary's cross, but you can get salvation through the cross. Okay, I'm going to take one example. Let's see. So the heart is the seat of the spiritual life. You know what a seat is? Seat in Congress. A seat is a place of what? Authority. So then... Your heart is the authority in your spiritual life. It is the authority in your moral, M-O-R-A-L. That's where morality comes from. And it is a seed of authority in your physical life. So let's take the physical life. You know, God already said, man shall not live by bread alone, but what? Every, how many? Oh, no, 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 no. I just want to live on some of my no but the ones I want to keep, I'm going to live by them. I'm not changing for nobody, not even for Jesus. I know what I think and I know how I feel and I know what I believe. You got an attitude like that? You in trouble. Oh, no. They know it. They know it. Because Jesus don't do nothing unless he let you know about it. He'll send you through the trials and the tests and everything for you to know about it. Well, you can't deny it. He always have evidence. Let's go to Acts 14 chapter. I didn't know. The Lord said, you know what he said? Now you're lying. I said I put what truth? He said he'll put what? Truth in your inward part. Jesus Christ is the truth. The Holy Ghost is the truth. And God is the truth. You are a product of the truth. You were begotten by the what? The word of truth. The hardness of the preaching is to wake you up. Things go on. Things can go on with or without you. I want to be a part of what God is doing. I don't have no feelings. I mean, I got feelings, but they don't rule me or control me. I have thoughts, but I find out they're not my own. They're either of God or the devil. <laughs> and it's what I allow to come in. <laughs> ah, okay, look at verse 17. It says, nevertheless, he left not himself without witness. Uh-huh. That means don't care what God does, he got evidence about himself. That's why somebody, oh, I, I didn't know. Uh, not in this day and age, maybe 50 or 60 years ago or 70 years ago, but so much revelation of who he is to come forth, you got to know. Because he said he'll make you what? No wisdom where? In the inward parts, the hidden parts. See, now he a man that he should lie. He said that, and so he did it. Now, you can either receive it or reject it. 
Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good. What else could he do? He's God. He don't do nothing but good. It might seem bad to us, but it's for our ultimate good. And gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons. That ain't nothing but a harvest. Filling our hearts. This is our physical life he's talking about. Satisfying our hearts, our bodies with food and gladness. So he took care of the physical body. He didn't leave us without evidence of himself. How? Got rain from heaven. Then there was a harvest. We have harvest all the time. We just go to the store and just buy. That's harvest, okay? Then he says, filling your hearts with what? That's satisfying the heart with joy. Gladness, joy, why? Because the physical life is taken care of. You're joyful. Why? Your physical life is taken care of. You still here? When we go home, we go eat, aren't we? Yes. So, I mean, you're going to go home all sad. No, you're going to have a bounce in your step because you can still bounce in step. You can still zip and zap while you're walking. So that's a seed of the physical life. Food for the body and gladness and joy in the heart. All right, come with me to James 5. Look at verse 5. Now, here's another aspect of it. The same heart now. He said, you have lived in pleasure on the earth. So that's a person that's lover of pleasure. Somebody that's self-indulgent and been wanton, careless, reckless. Not to the Lord Jesus. You have nourished your hearts. In fact, they hearts up with the world. That's going to affect the physical life as well as the spiritual life. As in a day of slaughter. See? You're fattening yourself up for a doomsday. Whatever you sow, you go reap. Whatever you sow out of here, how you sow? You sow with your thinking, you sow with your words, and you sow with your actions. If you're controlled by your five physical senses, what you think you're going to read through? Your five physical senses. Ain't going to do God no good because he down here. People who are ruled by what they see, how they feel, what they think, and all that, God ain't in that. Now, if you think in according to the way the Lord is thinking. I don't let nobody hurt my feelings because I ain't got none to hurt. They here. <laughs> this is protected. When I hear stuff, I think I must need to hear it or something come to me. I use that for my checklist for my own self as to what's in here. And God trying to get my attention to what's in here so we can get rid of it. So you got to let God be God. You are not God's providence. God is. You can calculate it this way and that way and God will get in there and mess it up every time because that's not his way. So you see this here? You have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. You have nourished your heart. So you can fatten your heart with all kind of stuff, but I want my heart to be nourished and fattened by the word of God, building myself up on my most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep myself in the love of God, looking for his mercy until eternal life, to him coming back. See, that's my only goal. That's the only goal I got. Come with me to Luke 21. Now, see, we were just talking about the person being reckless and careless, a lover of pleasure more than the Lord, and not knowing that he fattening his heart up for the day that's going to come for judgment. So now look in Luke 21 and 34. He said, heaven and earth go pass away, but what? His words are not going to pass away. Why? Because they down in here. This is eternal. The word of God is down in here. This is where the power of God is. And as long as God is alive, I'm alive, even though I'm dead. Your life here with Christ in God. Verse 34. And take heed to yourself. Look, take heed to what? Yourself. Not what you see, but in here. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting or self-indulgence and drunkenness. You're talking about with the world, that reveling. At least at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. Anxiety is trying to come in. Then the Lord already told you don't be anxious for nothing, but in everything, everything with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Make your request known to him. He didn't lie. I ain't going to be anxious about them. And so that day, look, don't be overcharged with all this stuff. And so that day, that's a day of slaughter. Come upon you unawares. In other words, it's going to catch you like the spring of a trap. Like that mouse, you got that peanut butter on that little thing, and that mouse sniffing around, he you know it's a trap. Get ready to eat that peanut butter, and that thing, he gone. See, this is like this. The Lord don't want that day to catch you unaware. It'd be just like you caught in a trap, and you don't even know it. 
The heart is a deceitful thing. Why? Because we don't have the knowledge of it. See, now we started off with the God kind of love and I got led this way. You always want to follow the spirit of God to what's needed. Amen? Because I said, ain't none of us going to get left behind. Everybody here going to be conformed to the image of Christ. Whether you bend your knee willingly or it be broke to be. Lord, whatever we need to go through, let us go through it. Because we want to see you. The final analysis is to see the Lord Jesus Christ. And be at his right hand. Where he can say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen.